It's time to dish once again with the Paddock Prince, Ed DeRosa in Louisville, David Levitch in Oldham County, and both of us very much looking forward to the road to the Kentucky Derby, which David does seem to begin in earnest about this time. Triple Crown noms are out. Risen Stars the first race with 50 points to the winner. And most importantly, your first top 10 list of the year. Yeah, I think this is, I agree with you, this is the first. I wouldn't say the grade threes are all preps. I mean, not preps, but when you get to the 50 pointers, you start to see more horses come out of the woodwork, horses coming off layoffs. The fields get deeper. The Risen Star is 14 horses in the race. Looks like a really good race. And then obviously going forward, we'll have the Rebel next week. And it looks like everything's starting to heat up. And yeah, my Derby top 10 list, I don't know. It's a little early, but I do think this year it's going to be interesting to see what happens with the Baffert horses, obviously. But there does seem to be some really good horses this year. I'm a little better, I feel like, this year at this time than it was last year. The As in the crop, and, and we will take a look at your top 10 here very shortly. I uh, do want to tease, uh, we'll mention it later. We're going to be back later this week with a look at that pick five at Aqueduct on Friday. Huge carryover in the early pick five. Just 15% takeout, so that is definitely the sequence for me. Second one of the year. Pick five. What's that? Second pick five carryover of the year at Aqueduct, the early pick five carryover, isn't it? Yeah, it's yeah. with the other one. Yeah, that's a miracle. That's very rare. Very rare. They get to the, the big pools, but uh, it was tough to solve on Sunday. We'll try to figure it out Friday, so separate video for that. Uh, this one's all about looking ahead to the Derby. We'll take a look at the Risen Star, but first we are going to look at David's top ten. And I got to be honest, I have a hard time really uh, picking apart anything here. Um, you know, I, I guess you could make a case for probably any one of the top three being in the top spot. Uh, but I think you have the third choice, I guess, tap it trice of those three up there, number one. And uh, I, I can't fault you for it. Yeah, I just I, I mean, Forte, I, I saw he closed as the shortest price in the latest derby um futures or whatever you want to call it um i just i guess they're they don't have great records coming back as a two-year-old champion so obviously i guess he's the most accomplished horse coming of the year you won't see him to the fountain of youth but you know it's an early list i think um tapit trice has to he's obviously got to improve but his made i mean his allowance when going a mile was really really good and if you, i'm not a big gallop out person but the longer the farther the stretch he just looked like he was good climbing and going and going so i think he's a horse that's really going to improve at the distance i think arabian knight's the most talented horse in the crop but i'm taking the bafferts with a little grain of salt this year if he's not the trainer because last year he had a couple horses in the derby table was being asked a lot and Messier was a horse with a good chance, but they didn't fare great. So I'm going to take the Bafferts with um, a little grain of salt this year. And obviously Cox has a big hand with hit show instant coffee. I didn't put victory formation on there because I got to see it against the better field, but he has a good chance in the risen star this weekend. So I think there's a lot of talented horses. Yeah. I'm, I'm sort of with you on Baffert, which uh, I admit a little unfair. I mean, it was just one, literally one sample size of a year and very unique situation with him not being able uh, to train at Churchill Downs incorporated racetracks, including Churchill itself and the Derby. Uh, but that was not great. <laughs> what we saw from uh, Messier and Taba. Now Taba, you know, the, the justify situation, he actually started his career the first week of March. So when he runs in the yeah. Saudi cup next week, he will not even have been in, uh, been racing for a full calendar year. So very Which much is up crazy. against it. Messi, on the other hand, look like a, a typical, like Baffert Derby contender, especially from further back when he would win with horses who didn't necessarily have to win every race, like silver charm and real quiet. And he laid an egg and hasn't been the same since. So when it comes to taking a short price, I'm sort of with you on that is in the back of my head. Uh, but I was there for the Southwest and Arabian night. He looked awesome. Yeah, he's he's I think he's the most talented horse in the group in terms of just raw ability. But Baffert, I guess the ruling's coming up. It might looks like he might have to transfer his horses even earlier this year, which Last year, he basically just shipped into a different trainer for the last prep. So this year, if they make right. him switch March first, it's gonna even, it's gonna be even a little more hard for me to trust some of those horses. And then you had horses like Skinner this past weekend for John Sheriff. So ran a ninety-five buyer. He's a horse to watch. Kings Barn ran an eighty-five at Tampa. So looks like there's a lot of horses that obviously are not on my list that have good chances to do well in the preps going forward. 
Yep. And uh, speaking of not on your list, totally missing despite 14 being in the Risen Star, not a one of these is in your top 10 yet. But the good thing about the Risen Star being first on the list is you sort of can wait and see, as you noted, with a horse like victory formation, maybe two fills. Uh, he, he'll definitely need to improve off the LeCompte, not impossible. Uh, certainly a deep field, uh, but I do agree with you. None of these, as of yet, seem like a top 10 contender to me. No, and there's the number five horse, Harlow Cap, is the first horse that's been transferred from Baffert. He'll be running for Steve Asmussen, even though his last work was at Santa Anita. So basically they're shipping him over with a different trainer labeled. So I don't know if you take that as a good sign. They must think he's doing well and they want to get the points now, or are they just going to leave him with Asmussen? I'm, I'm guessing they'll leave him with Asmussen after the race, but he is the first Baffert horse that's been switched. Yeah, I think this race looks really good as a betting race. I think like a victory formation, he hasn't, he hasn't, he didn't beat much in his last race, but he didn't draw great in here, but he does have some ability. So I need to see some of these horses do it. Then maybe they'll make, you know, my top 10 list. Curly Jack comes back off the layoff who last was seen at Churchill in the <coughs> jockey club. So there's a lot of um, good horses in this race that could get in the top, um, top 10 going forward. Yep. And whoever does win, regardless uh, if they get a, a 70 buyer or a 110 uh, will be in the Derby because 50 points, Definitely yeah. enough, no matter what. And, and second, certainly a, a strong number uh, to get in there as well. So uh, an important key race. Uh, it is a prep for the Louisiana Derby at a mile and three sixteenths, but uh, certainly a win and you're in for the Kentucky Derby itself as well. I agree with you. Victory formation, the one to beat. I haven't done the work enough yet to say if I want three to one or not, but uh I don't know. This field in a race that has produced some bombs in the past, I think I'm going to end up going hunting when push comes to shove. Yeah, I glanced at it for a minute. I'd I'd be shocked if Victory Formation got its own lead. I mean, Harlow Cap's got speed. There's some other. Oh yeah, there's there's plenty of speed in here. Yeah, and he's breaking from 13. I do like that the Fairgrounds has distance in their preps. To this day, I don't understand why Aqueduct still does the withers back to the Gotham, back to the wood distance, mile and yeah. eighth, mile and nine. So I do like how the fairgrounds progresses with their distances. There's one horse in there, too, that he's a maiden, is Kruppy. I would watch that horse because, or Kruppy, he um he never breaks. If he ever breaks one day, have decent. <laughs> he would be a horse. Um, he ran a really good race last time. So I think he's an interesting um, maiden coming into the race, but it looks like a really good betting race. And you said you brought up buyers. That's why I didn't have anybody from the Sam F. Davis on my list. That race uh, was <laughs> that won was by bad. Litigate. Yeah, 76 buyers aren't getting you to the Derby. No. He's gonna, I guess he got 20 points, so he's going to have to hit the board in another prep. But that's why if anybody was wondering, though, Sam F. Davis horse was not on my list because that was, that was not the best figure. No. Nope. Uh, agreed. And, and I do believe in the numbers. I mean, even – uh, I mean, I know, you know, horses like Rich Strike and, and my net bird do jump up and win. But it, at this stage of the year, like you're, you're not looking for a 76. No, I don't care who you are. Who no, you're I agree with you 100 percent. And, and, you know, Wonder Wheel even got beat. So, you know, going onto the Oaks Trail, there's some that was a interesting upset as well. So I'm taking the whole Tampa Bay first day at Tampa Bay preps kind of I'm tossing those out the window. Those horses you're are right. going to have to improve well, going forward for me. Speaking of the Oaks Trail, uh, kind of walking two paths right now, and we'll see what happens in the Rachel Alexandra. I did notice that Hoosier Philly did not make your top 10 list. Uh, Certainly from a wagering perspective, uh, underlay of the century at 11 or 12 to 1, whatever she closed at, just a ridiculous price on a Philly who is going to have to face males at some point. Yeah, she was was a favorite, individual favorite. Um, I have always thought she's better than, I shouldn't say always thought. In the last two months, I've thought she is the better Philly than Julia Shining. Uh, The the numbers sort of back that up. Um, And certainly what we saw this weekend didn't dissuade me from that. But, man, that is some serious dough that she took in a future wager in February before she's even made her three-year-old debut. I'm excited to see her. I'm glad I'll be there. But definitely a wait-and-see approach for me. Yeah, this is the best field she's also faced by far. The the field she beat in Kentucky were not not that great. She's never had she's never really been set down. So I don't know how she's gonna react when she has to be set down. She's gonna have I with Chop Chop in the race and the other the Pletcher horse is doesn't have the best figures, but she at least has speed. 
So there's going to be some pace in there. Chop Chop Camp's coming off an 88 buyer. I think she's getting blinkers on. So she's definitely facing her best field. I know it's not the end goal for her, but Hoosier Philly's a little overhyped in my opinion. <laughs> You know, she's never ran faster than 82. I know she was only a two-year-old, and she never really – maybe when she is asked, she'll be even better. So I think it's an interesting interesting race to watch. You know, I kind of compared her Wonder Wheel, who was also – I just don't know if the Phillies were that great It's at two. Obviously, they can all improve, but we'll no. see. You know, Julia Shining's an interesting horse. I've, I don't – I saw has had to be tired after that race. I mean, he literally rode that horse the entire <laughs> way around the racetrack. So she's a horse. I, I don't, I'm, not, I'm not Todd Pletcher, so I, maybe they'll put blinkers on her going forward because she is just, I mean, she's just straight bicycle. So we'll see with her. All right. Well, we will see. And uh, we'll see you again later this week, hopefully after a win against Collins this evening uh, for the North Olden Mustangs. And we're definitely going to be looking to win on that pick five carryover at Aqueduct. That's the early pick. Yeah, five. I'm looking forward to it. The quarter million. I glanced at it. It looks. Yeah, yeah, it looks, and you know what's funny? There was a there was a bomb in the last race of the late pick five that would have carried the late pick five also. He obviously didn't win, but that was a crazy day result. So I'm guessing they have a pick six carryover as well. They do. So they're going to have a lot of action at Aqueduct. Yeah, might. Uh, and the pick five I'm not, looks decent. I'm not sure what their record is uh, in February at Aqueduct, but I, I have to think they're gonna they're gonna approach it with the, these kind of eyes on those races. Yeah, 100%. I think it's going to be, I would guess, the pick five pool gets over a million because I think that I don't know this for a fact, but does early pick fives get more? Do they get more bet in than late pick fives? Or maybe late pick fives have taken over now. Yeah, I think in New York, it, it well, the early used to because it used to be the late was only restricted to on track and Naira bets. Um, yes. Now that it's open, yeah. the late gets more. I think in California, you sometimes see the early do better. A, the takeout's lower, and B, the early goes off when the eastern tracks are still going on, so you get that overlap. Mm -hmm. um, so I could yeah. see that in California. But, yeah, for the for the most part, anywhere else, it's the late. But not yeah, on Friday. So, yeah, I think the – no, I think the pick five will be over a million. And then oh, yeah. is the pick Easy. six a double carryover? No. Yeah, pick six a double carryover. No. Is it just one? Oh, okay. Yeah, because so, there's it, a lot of action at Aqueduct. It carried into Withers Day, and then it got hit, and then Sunday it didn't get. Oh, hit. okay. That's what it was. So, gotcha. Well, all right. Well, appreciate dishing with me. Had fun. It looks like I would say this weekend is where Derby preps really start to heat up. I saw Cave Rock works for the first time yesterday, so he's starting to make his way back. So, yeah, all the good horses look like they're starting to come back out of the woodworks. Yeah, we haven't had any uh, huge defections yet, I don't think. So uh, hopefully you keep them sound and keep it interesting. Yeah, no, I, I don't think there actually – no, there hasn't been any big defections yet. I'm sure it's coming now since you of said course. it. So I'm yeah. sure I'll get on Twitter and it's, it's coming now. Yeah, we'll end this and someone will be out, but nature of the beast. So, all right, well, we will talk again later this week for pick five. Uh, in the meantime, that's your top ten. I look out of the Risen Star. Best of luck.